what is going on beautiful beings and conscious co-creators welcome or welcome back to my channel thank you guys for subscribing and thank you guys for tuning in and clicking that button i am so glad and grateful that you decided to join me on today's reading we are talking about is it you or is it them okay this is a pick a card and i'm gonna just give you a very brief just, just brief description and explanation as to what is going on and basically whose fault is it <laughs> we always want to know whose fault is it um uh, I'm feeling particularly playful so this reading is not necessarily meant to be taken like extremely like seriously and and it's definitely not for the sensitive but um I'm all about accountability on this channel so I'm going to give you that no fluff reading that you have been looking for when it comes to relationships with other people when it comes to conflict so before you start I want you guys to have in mind a conflict or a situation with another person I want you to be thinking about that as I lead you into picking your your card your, your group okay so have a situation have that argument have that disagreement have that person that you don't have any contact with have that person that you are in a disagreement with or having a trouble like having trouble reconciling with have that in your head and we're gonna move forward okay all right let's go let's get started all right beautiful beings you guys at this point I've already picked this situation this conflict this person you've already picked them and we are about to start with the pick a card so in front of you I have three different groups this is gonna be group one this is gonna be group two and this is going to be group three I want you guys to continue meditating on that situation that conflict that person this 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 need to resolve whatever it is I want you to continue meditating on that and asking yourself as you're thinking about it asking yourself out loud is it me or is it them is it me or is it them is it me or is it them okay now I would advise you to try to do that first with your eyes closed and then as you said it a few times several times I want you to slowly open your eyes and whatever your eyes fixate on first that is the group that I want you to pick. So as you're opening your eyes, whatever you see first, I want you to go with. I want you to go with your first instinct. I want you to go with your gut instinct. Both of those tend to usually be the first thing you think of or the first thing that you gravitate towards. So don't think too much on it. Don't second guess yourself. Um, again, this is going to be group one, group two, and group three. Um, all three groups are going to be in the description box down below. The timestamps will be all down there. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with group one, but I will see groups two and three at your timestamp, okay? All right, let's get started. What's going on at group one? We are here to do your reading. Once again, we are asking Spirit to figure out for us to uncover, provide insight, clarity, and guidance. Of course, and as always, regarding the situation that I asked you to think about at the beginning of this reading, immediately we got a card to flip over. And we're asking, is it them or is it me? Is it them or is it me? Is it them or is it me? <laughs> Group one, it's a trick question. It's both of you. It's both of you. You guys are equally contributing to this mess. You guys are equally contributing to this mess. It's not one person's mess more than it is the other. What's interesting though is both of you guys feel like it is absolutely them. We'll leave back a deck here. 
back of deck is the tower card all right remember i told you guys i am a no fluff reader i give it to you how i see it and um, my readings are not for the sensitive they're not for the weak no offense but uh i don't have time to bullshit so we're gonna go ahead and get started <sighs> group one like i said before it's both of y'all you guys are both to blame you guys are both equally responsible for this mess it was not one person's drama it was it was both people contributing to this situation and this mess that we have in front of us okay it's a lot of mess and i keep saying mess because i see tower card and i just see a lot of um toxic mess going on i just it's just it just feels it's giving very much toxic <laughs> and um it's stressful okay i mean whatever this is like the fact that you got so many just like it's okay let me just let me just gather my thoughts <laughs> all right so we have the um we have the nine of swords in reverse right so it's like this this whole situation is so incredibly stressful it is keeping you up late at night you're not able to get enough rest uh enough, not enough you're not able to get enough rest or sleep. Uh, you're in a very unpeaceful place when it comes to this individual. Uh, but there's a lot of love there. There's a lot of, um, it's you, there's, this isn't a conversation or a question of whether or not you guys have feelings for one another. It's not a question of whether or not y'all care about each other. But the issue is with the nine of cups that I'm seeing, you guys don't love yourselves enough. So it's almost, I've talked about this briefly in the past, but like when two people come, and their cups are are half full and they're looking for the they're looking to fill the rest of their cup in the other person it almost always ends up in a mess in a crisis in a very negative uh and almost always a toxic situation okay you want to look for your inner fulfillment first you want to look for your inner peace first okay and then we have to begin to transform this narrative that another person has to come into your life and complete you because they do not i say this all the time if there's nothing else that you get from this reading please hear me you complete yourself okay you have to be at peace with yourself the other person is only on my channel only supposed to add to your life okay so and you know, I love a good metaphor. If you were cooking like a big pot of stew, okay, your person is not the meat. Your person is not the vegetables. Your person is the spice, okay? Your person adds to the meal. The meal is still the meal. There's still meat, there's still vegetables. The, it's still a stew. You just added some spice to make it taste better, right? But without that spice, it's still stew. And it's probably still good. You just added a little bit of flavor in there. That is what your person is supposed to be doing in your life. So if your person is the meat and that person decides to exercise their right of choice and freedom and exit your life, you have no stew. Why? Because you have made that person the meat. That's a problem. That's a problem. This codependency is what I'm concerned about, right? Because both of you guys are doing the same thing. You're the meat for his stew and He's the meat for your stew. And the issue is that both of y'all <laughs> are all over the place. And you're trying to establish expectation. You're trying to establish consistency. You're trying to establish a long-term relationship with someone who doesn't know themselves. Now, right there, what I just said could be applying to you or them or both. One of y'all is, is that way. It's very difficult to make plans with someone who doesn't know where they're going. It's like when you ask someone... Where do you see yourself in, in three years or five years? And they say, I have no idea. That person is not the person that you make long-term plans with. That person is not the person you have kids with. The lover's card is in reverse. Why? Because y'all are all over the place. It's like there's a there's a there's a huge connection. It may be sexual, physical attraction that connected you guys from the beginning, or it could have been um, both of you guys are interested in the same thing. Um, like for example, both of you guys are musicians, both of you guys are actors, both of you guys are artists. There's something that is connecting you guys together. And again, it's 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 one thing, but it doesn't whatever that thing is does not make a relationship, and that's where you've got it confused. You thought that because this person 
believes in the same thing I believe that we're destined to be together. Wrong. That's not it at all. That's not it at all. And Six of Swords in, in reverse is kind of telling me that um, you have a problem letting stuff go. You have a problem uh, walking away or dismissing, um, not walking away. No, no, no. Let me correct myself. You have a problem walking away. You have a problem letting stuff go and dismissing um, thoughts that don't serve you. Uh, one, I want to say you probably have a lot of opinions. And whenever this is, you, you go to different people and, and they insert their opinions and they make the situation a hundred times worse than it has to be. We do that a lot in our relationships and, and, and it's because of other people's um, contribution, <laughs> their opinion. It's because of those people that a lot of us end up, you know, prolonging the solution because we don't actually go and sit with our partner. We go to other people. And we and a lot of times you're going to people who either never been in a successful relationship, don't even like their partner, you know, don't don't have a partner or just have don't they're not in the position you're in. So it's very hard because you're probably more than likely getting biased information, biased uh feedback. And that doesn't help anybody. And also I, the conversations that y'all have, um, I feel like when there's anger, it's really brutal. It's really brutal. So, um, again, when it comes to, is it you or is it them? You know, I can't help but give solutions. It's the, it's the, you know, unprofessional therapist in me. <laughs> Uh, so I can't help but give solutions with my readings. Uh, so you're going to get that. Don't worry. Um, but um, it's both of y'all. It's not him. And it's not just you. It's both of y'all. Y'all are both equally adding fuel to this fire. And I want you guys to resolve it. And so I'm going to give you some advice. Okay. Backup deck says this energy is all over the fucking place. The tower card means it, it, there's so much happening right now that you can't even ignore. It's, it, it's inescapable, unavoidable. So my advice to you is to address it head on. My advice to you is to prioritize finding the peace by any means when it comes to yourself, not them. Your peace. What does your peace look like? And my challenge for you, group one, is to figure out is to figure out what that looks like, whether they're in your life or not. Because right now, they're affecting how you see yourself. And again, that is a huge problem. And uh, this energy, like I said, this could be, I could be reading it for them because like I said, we put that energy of both of y'all when you pick this reading, right? So I could be picking up on how they're feeling. So if, if what I'm saying doesn't quite hit you, it's probably what I'm picking up from them. But one of you or both of you <clears throat> one of you or both of you needs to assess what the peace looks like. You need to figure out, can I have peace even though I'm in this situation? You also need to ask yourself, does this person add to my life when I think about that piece now right now they don't but I'm talking about as a whole and then I also want you to consider this idea and concept of like putting your ego aside and saying you know what I don't have to be right because sometimes we hold on to grudges and we argue about the most triv trivial mundane shit just for the sake of being right and I see it hurt so many relationships. In this this relationship, it feels romantic, it feels sexual, it feels like this is someone that you're with, um, have engaged, uh, like, like in a in a in a way that has connected you guys on a physical aspect. And so, I've seen so many people argue about the most ridiculous shit just for the sake of saying I was right and I want to again challenge you these are all challenges to ask yourself is it even worth it is it worth it to be right if it means that I hurt my relationship it does it doesn't matter if I'm right if this person ends up walking away from me and I'm alone 
Like so, there's so many, like I said, that's why you have to be very careful who you're asking advice from because there's a lot of women, I'll, I'll give it both ways. There's a lot of women out here that are, that have this, I've been, I've been kind of peeping the, the women out here that, that, um, that have these, like these, these misconceptions of how a relationship is supposed to be and how it's supposed to go. And there's a lot of men out here that are doing the same. They have they have this idea of how a woman is supposed to be, how a woman is supposed to act. And again, I would caution you guys. I would caution you guys who you're listening to and who you're taking advice from. Because I personally like to take advice from people that are where I want to be. So I happen to have a couple in my life that have been married for, I don't even know, like 45 years, 50 years. They've been together for a very long time. I'm not going to listen to someone on the internet who has never been in a serious relationship, who arguably doesn't even like women. Okay. Someone who belittles women. Just like I'm not as a man, if I was a man, I'm not going to go on the internet and look and look for advice for a woman who has only had, who, 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 who's never been in a relationship who only knows how to express herself sexually, who continues to make mistake after mistake after mistake, and the only product out of that relationship are children. It's not that the children are a mistake, but it's just like you entertain men who you know you shouldn't be with, and it's just like we've, we've gotta stop We've got to stop just blanketly taking advice from people and, and pay attention. Would you go to a homeless person and ask them how to be a millionaire? It's very simple, very black and white. This is right. Would you go to a bartender and ask them how to fly a plane? If they've never flown a plane? No, you wouldn't. That sounds crazy. You would go to a pilot, right? You would go to a millionaire to ask them how they got their money. So why are you going to miserable, angry, lonely people and asking them how to be in a happy, successful, loving relationship? Why would you do that? Watch the advice you, you have. Watch the advice you um you take from other people. Make sure those people are, are or have at least experienced what you want. Okay? That is your reading group one. I'm going to go ahead and go to group two. But I will see you guys in my next video, okay? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, all right? Bye. What's going on, group two? Welcome to your reading. We are here to talk about whether or not it is you or it is them, okay? Group one, let me tell you. If, by the way, group two, um, I want to say this, and I keep forgetting to say this at the intro, but my readings, all three groups, have gems. I drop gems in every single one of my readings. Okay. Um, the inner psychologist in me, <laughs> um, can't help but find resolutions and, and, um, you know, help get someone to the place of inner peace. And even though I am a no fluff reader, so I don't always say what you want to say, what you want me to hear, what you want to hear. I don't, I don't say what people want me to say is what I'm trying to say. And so, you know, I can ruffle some feathers. However, if you ever were just like, you know, I want to go, I want to just get some good advice, some solid advice about life, love, you know, any kind of relationship, career, whatever. My readings for the most part, all give that. I'm not trying to just toot my own horn, but I mean, you know, beep, beep. So um, if you're ever just, you know, wondering, well, what was group one's reading about? Go take a, go take a little, a little peek. And with what we talked about in group one and even in group three. Okay. So anyway, Spiro asking for those that pick group two and those that opened up about their relationships and they're inquiring about, is it them? Or I'm going to say it the way that you would have said it. Is it me or is it them? We're asking about that always with the intentions. Thank you. Of receiving insight, clarity, and guidance. Ashe, Ashe.
a lot coming out. I'm going to keep all those cards and we're going to do back of deck, which is the page of wands. Interesting. Page of wands is in reverse. Big old reading. Okay. <clears throat> All right, group two, I think it's you. <laughs> I don't think it's them. I think it's you. Okay. Um, I, I feel like you're not, you're not, you're not all in with this person. And as much as you want to, and as much as you rack your brain about it, um, when it comes to making the decision and it feels like there is a, there's, there's a decision that you, you have to make. We have every single two, every single two is in your deck right now. Okay. We have the two of wands. We have the two of pentacles. We have the two of swords and we have the two of cups. You have every single, every single two in the minor arcana in your group right now. So it just, it, to me, when I think two, I think decisions, 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 choices. Okay. Like you're caught in the middle. You're stuck. You haven't committed to left or right, front or back. Yes or no. Right. And so the stagnant energy you may be feeling is, is because you haven't, you haven't committed to, you haven't committed to, um, Whatever this is, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, figure out really what this, what this is. It's so interesting because 10 of pence is upside down. It feels like a commitment to this person though. Yeah, it feels like a commitment to this person, uh, but it does make me feel like the reason why you're not committing to this person is because you don't feel um, you don't feel secure. You don't feel assured. I feel like maybe there's something that this person has done in the past, maybe entertaining other people because, you know, I'm seeing I'm seeing um, three of cups in reverse and I'm seeing two of cups upright. So it's like, it feels like there's love, but there's also, um, there's also a distrust there. I feel like you don't really trust this person. And maybe you feel like you'd be much more happier by yourself. I feel like you're, you're having a hard time. Um, you're having a hard time making a decision, but I will say word of caution um, this, 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 this time right now in your life where you think you have time, this period of your life, I'll say, so I don't use the word twice, this period in your life where you think you have a lot of time to decide and that you can take your time. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not gonna, you don't have a lot of time to figure this out. You need to make a decision. But I will say, I feel like your gut is that you just don't, you don't trust the situation and that's okay. This isn't about wrong or right. Okay. This is just about, is it you or is it them? It doesn't mean that if it's you, that you're wrong. It just means that this is a you thing. It's not them. Like they've done their dirt. They've done their shit. They've probably owned up to it or they will. But you have to decide at the end of the day what's best for you and what's best for your future and, you know, whatever you have going on in this world. Like, what is it? Like, I said this in the group one and, I, and I, it, it reigns true in everything that we do. It's like every single relationship that we're in, if it doesn't add to our life, then what is it doing? What are we doing? Because if you're not adding to my life by way of love, by way of affection, by way of, of, of teaching me things of, of me. Is this, is this a teacher and pupil relationship? Are you my mentor? Like, what is it? Like every single person in your life must be defined. Cause when you leave gray areas open, then that means that you don't know how to categorize that person. And I feel like people are just too unpredictable for you not to have categories, categories. Like you, you need to know what that person's role is in your life. And if you don't know what it is yet, then we need to, we need to focus on defining it. 
Is this person here for a season? Or if this person is this person here for a lifetime? Is this my life partner? Or is this just, you know, someone to keep my bed warm? Is this the person that I plan on having children with? Or is this person just supposed to teach me how to be a better lover? Like everyone comes into our life for a reason. Again, this is not about good or bad, right or wrong, you know, politics, religion. It's not about any of that. It's about understanding why the universe has put you two together in this moment, in this time. That's what's going to help you decide what to do here, group two. That's going to be the decision because love is not enough. I'll say that again. Love and being in love with someone is not enough. Finding someone physically attractive is not enough. So on a foundation, you need to figure out what is it that we're always going to have at the baseline? Meaning, if I don't like you today, what, it, what else is there to keep me here? You can't see my hands. Here. <laughs> but honestly and truly, when I see, I keep seeing Page of Wands, and this is your backup deck energy, right? I keep seeing Page of Wands, and it just makes me feel like you've kind of lost interest a little bit. Maybe you haven't admitted it to yourself yet, but you've, you've lost interest in this person. Whatever this was, maybe you've just kind of felt like, you know what, I'm kind of, I'm kind of growing out of that. I, I feel like I'm maturing past that. It's interesting because I do say that there are three, three distinct phases in a woman's life that she could reach. It doesn't mean you always will, but it does mean that you could. And when you do reach these things, massive changes happen. So from a maid, from a maiden to a queen, right? The first phase is made and the second phase is queen. From those two phases, once a woman decides to step into her queenhood, the shit she did as a maiden is not appealing. She doesn't do that no more. It doesn't give her anything anymore. That's just, it's, a, it's the same thing as when you, when you grow older, you don't put on your baby clothes because that's stupid. That doesn't make sense. You can't fit that shit. It doesn't serve you. Why would you try to fit yourself in the baby clothes that you were wearing at six months when you're 12? It doesn't make sense right? Some of us, we used to play with dolls when we were in elementary school. And now we don't play with dolls anymore because we're grown. We got shit to do. We got bills to pay. We have time to play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's a, there's a, there's a trigger of a, a huge transformation that happens from one phase to another. Right. And I feel like some of you guys have entered into your queenhood and so the stuff that you entertained in your maiden stages are not appealing to you anymore, but because they existed, you maybe feel some, some, some sort of sense of loyalty. Maybe you don't want to leave this situation. Maybe you guys have a lot of history and memories with this person. So you're justifying that as a reason why you don't want to move forward. But at the same time, you can't go back. So that's why you're stagnant. It's not that person's fault. It's not. That person is being who they are. And we have to learn to accept people for who they are. We have to learn to meet people where they are and stop giving them expect expectations that are higher than what they even came to this lifetime to experience. That is not, if they don't meet our expectations, that is not their problem. That's our problem. We, if I set a parameter for you, if I set a boundary, if I set an expectation and you can't meet it, and that's something that I need, then it is up to me to make the changes, not you. You already showed me who you are. Why would I get mad if you showed me who you are based off of my expectations? That's what the fuck they're there for. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop preaching to you guys. I just want you guys to really understand that the changes that you're experiencing are they're 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 designed. It's it was written down for you to experience these things. Your will of fortune here is it was written down for you to experience these things. And the best way to get to happiness is to narrow down narrow the options. Okay? Stop considering everything and everyone else. Focus on yourself. There's a lot of two energy here. But what you need to do is focus on that one important person, that one, um, the star of this entire show, the star of this entire reality, which is your reality. That's you. Take care of that person. 
All right, group two, that is your reading. I'm gonna go ahead and go to group three. If you like this reading or any kind of readings that I do here, hit that subscribe button. If anything that I said here resonates at any point in time, ashe, ashe, I am very grateful for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next reading, okay? going on group number three a welcome to your reading we are here to ask spirit is it you or is it them side note after going through group um, group one and group two i have noticed a couple things one i'm stuttering a lot <laughs> and two i'm dropping gems in every single one of these readings okay so if you are just like, you know what? I really want some just life advice. Feel free to go back and listen to those other, um, those other readings, because even though you pick this group and you should definitely listen to this group as well, there are some gems that you maybe can take from the other two readings as with, you know, just about every single one of my videos, um, the inner therapist and psychologist in my head, uh, there's, you know, several people up there, but one of them is a psychologist. He's, he's kind of like a Sigmund Freud type, right? And so um, he can't help but like dig deep and find solutions and resolutions to some of you guys' uh, conflicts, right? So, and I, and I, allow, I allow him to do that, you know? And so anyway, um, yeah, I just want to let you guys know that that's, that's always an option. And, um, uh-oh, does something flip? No, nothing flipped. And so, yeah, I just want to let you guys know that that is an option. Now, we're going to go ahead and jump back into your reading. So, Spirit, you've already been flipping cards over, which we definitely appreciate. But we are asking for any other cards, any more cards for group three. Those that are asking, is it me or is it them? Is it me or is it them? Thank you. Of course, we're asking these with the intent and purpose of receiving insight, clarity, and guidance. Thank you. Any other card, Spirit? For group three, those that are asking, is it me or is it them? Any other cards? Okay. Back of deck, the magician. not happened in a very long time but um i have a song playing i have a song playing in my head which is weird because i don't even listen to this person like that um but the song by the weekend i think it's called i deserve it i'm not sure i think it was that song off of the 50 shades album you know <laughs> You deserve it. That song, I can't seem to save my life, but there you go. That song was playing in, like, it was, it was like a, a radio turned it on in my head. Which is so interesting. So interesting. So anyway, group three. Is it you or is it them? I'm feeling like it's them with a little bit of you. It's them, but it's, it's how you're responding to it. I'll say it like that. See, group one's reading was very uh, black and white for me. It was very, I like, I'm not gonna tell you what theirs was you'll have to go back and watch it if you want to but yours is a little more complicated 
right? So why do you say that, reader? Why do you say it's them with a little bit of me? Well, because um, <laughs> it's a little bit of you because you've forgotten who you are. It's a little bit of you because you have forgotten how far you've come. Um, and I feel like you guys maybe have this case of, uh, I've forgotten myself. So when I see the queen of wands in reverse, I see somebody who's just uh, a little, a little insecure. I see someone who kind of is a little bit more, a little all over the place. She's kind of spontaneous, but like in the, um, in the, in the realm of like, just being out of alignment. She's lost her way. Okay. And so to me, when I think of queen of wands, I think of someone who's not necessarily on solid ground. She's not grounded. She's kind of floating a little bit. And when you're floating, it's easy to be pulled in any which way direction. It's, it's almost like the antithesis of being anchored, right? So it's like, it's like you've lost your footing when it comes to yourself based off of the mess this person's done. I'm also seeing that this is a, when you're saying, when it's like, is it you or is it them? I see this person being someone that you were uh, deeply connected with. This is probably someone you've had kids with. This is probably someone you're married to or engaged to or in some sort of long-term relationship with. And that's probably why you've kind of lost your sense of self a little bit because um, you've been with this person for so long that um, your your energies are kind of are kind of mixed and muddled. And I don't think you're doing the best job of maintaining who you are within this long-term relationship. And I get it because that's really difficult to do. I've been there. It's difficult to remember who you are and to maintain your sense of individuality when you are, when you have mixed and mingled almost every aspect of your life and your reality with another person. I get it. But I want to point out just really quick before, so I don't forget that the way to combat that is to meditate. The way to combat that is to always make sure you are doing activities that, that only only serve you you do that by making sure that there are aspects about your life and your reality that are completely and entirely selfish there's nothing wrong with that but because you are intermingled with another individual it's about balance See, people in their single season have it lucky. And that's why I don't understand why people who are single complain so fucking much. Because it's like, do you realize that you literally have 100% of your time to be selfish? Whereas people who are in relationships, who have kids, who have families, they have to find a balance to satisfy all of the aspects and obligations. It's like people are complaining because they don't have more responsibility. It's, 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 it's crazy to me. <laughs> but back to your story. So the, um, the seven of swords in reverse, right? It's like, it's like uh, to me, I'm going to read it how I wouldn't normally read it, but I'm just going off of intuition. It feels like you... Um, You're not being as careful as you should be when it comes to this person. I'm going to continue reading some stuff. You, you, need, you need to be more careful with this person. Yeah. I feel this person, this person has a wandering eye. This person is losing focus an interest in what y'all have going on right now. I don't know if this is necessarily a season or a cycle or phase. Um, but 
Um, I will say again, I'm a I, look. I've already I've already deemed the title. I'm a no fluff reader. I'm not always gonna say what you want me to say, and you're not always gonna hear what you want to hear over here. But I will tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth as I see it. Okay, so. I'm going to say that um, I, I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket when it comes to this individual right now because I don't feel like this person is proving to be a person of integrity or a person who um, is responsible. I'll say it like that. This is not somebody that I would depend on. And even for the fact that back of deck energy, which is reading as the overall energy is the magician is, is it's the magician card is one of resourcefulness. The magician card is, is, is someone who is assuming they're right. Someone who understands who they are and what they can make happen just with the things around them. They don't need anyone else. This is a card of true independence when it comes to other people. Why is it number one in the tarot? In my opinion, it's because the first and foremost thing that you need to understand is yourself. Self-awareness is a powerful thing. And the fact that after the full card, which is zero, card zero, there is one. One is you. We skip this. We skip this and we go into lovers. Why? Lovers isn't number one. Number one is you. Number one is yourself. Number one prevents you from falling in love with people that are only coming into your life to bring you disaster and mayhem and drama and toxicity so you need to go back to number one doesn't necessarily mean necessarily mean you leave this person but you need to start the journey of going back to magician um i feel like this is a phase but like like i said it's them with a little bit of you because right now they're going through a phase that's almost in a way it's self-destructive and it's and it could be fucking up y'all's relationship but they need to get right with themselves. And you can't change them. They got to do it for themselves. I feel like some of you guys have kids with this person. But I still feel like the obligations and the responsibilities, um, I don't know if this person is meeting them or not. The star card in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they're necessarily um, being the uh, family man or the family person. Um, I, however, I'm reading the energies. I, it could be, it could be um, either or. Like it could be you or it could be them in the sense of like who I'm talking about. And I and I say that because when you ask the question out loud, I just get the story. Of course, and always, I'm gonna say, and I feel called and and and. I feel like I need to tell this to you guys specifically that if you need a specific individual reading, um, definitely find a reader who can give you more insight with this. So yeah, uh, you're in a very stressful situation because of this person, because of their antics, you're probably engaging with other people, you're probably entertaining other people. They probably have friends or relationships that they know you would not agree with, that you don't rock with. And they're doing it anyway. It's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. You feel like it's not fair. I feel like you kind of already know it's it's them. I feel like you already know they're the they're the they're the catalyst, but it's you also. It's a little bit of you because it's what you do with this information that will basically dictate how this story how your story unfolds i don't think anything that i'm saying is surprising there's an opportunity here an opportunity that's going to present itself hmm hmm I don't feel like you're necessarily going to go anywhere. I'm just being honest. <laughs> Tower card is here. Queen of Swords is here. This, okay. 
this part of the reading may not apply to everybody, but I'm going to say it how I see it. I don't necessarily think this person's antics are going to lead to an actual separation in the sense of like permanence, but I do believe that this situation is happening because both of you guys, at least one of you guys, but I feel like both of you guys need to learn something from this situation because there's something huge going to happen and it's going to threaten the, uh, See this, I think this person has, is not seeing you for who you're, who you are. They have forgotten and something is going to end up happening. That is going to shake them or rock them back into, you know, you know how people be like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I can't believe I was out here wiling out. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's, that's supposed to happen here. And again, this is not, I don't know how to say this because this is a general reading. This is a general reading, so I, I don't want to say this and, and, and make it to where everyone feels like they apply to this situation and then it becomes this whole, oh, well, the reader told me to stay in this, this negative, toxic situation. I'm not, that's not what I'm doing here. So I just want to preface that. Uh, what I do want to say is this relationship is not as black and white as the average person would think. Um, your relationship is one of testimony. And that means that you're going to go through some shit. I think that, I think that there's an evolution for yourself within this relationship. And you're being pressed in ways that no one has ever pressed you before. Hangman comes out. And if you're, if you're, uh, in, an oldie subscriber, you know, I used to talk about the hangman as the butterfly card. I used to say that all the time because the hangman makes me think of that butterfly that goes in a cocoon stage and there's a metamorphosis that ends up taking place. There's an enlightenment that takes place. There's a reason why this uh, card has him upside down, but as he's, as he's, uh, inverted the, um, the sun is around him. The sun in tarot for me represents a sense of enlightenment, a sense of a uh, pure joy and happiness. So to me, it's like when I see the hangman and I think of butterfly stages, you know, from the caterpillar to cocoon, and then out comes this, this, this butterfly, this, this caterpillar with wings, basically. And I talk about how the moment that that butterfly exits the cocoon, it now has is living, has the opportunity to live a life that a caterpillar would never see. The butterfly has an opportunity to go places that a caterpillar can never go. And I feel like this relationship is going to cause the butterfly to come out of you the evolution of yourself, the awakening of yourself. So yeah, I feel like your relationship is not an average relationship. So you shouldn't be receiving average advice. You shouldn't be receiving blanket. This is for everybody advice because this is not a normal relationship. Judgment card. I say, I don't even need to pull any more cards. Judgment card is the awakening card. Judgment card is the card that says, come forth and experience life as the, as the, um, vessel that you were, as the, as the person that you were made to. This is a destiny. This is a card of destiny. This is a card that's saying, be who you, not me. <sighs> one reading I'll go without hitting the mic one day, but this card is saying, I'm calling you to live the life you were supposed to live, to walk the path you were supposed to walk. And now you can hear me talking to you. It's a very spiritual connection you have with this person. That's what I'm saying. It's not black and white. It's very interesting. There are boundaries. In every single relationship, there are boundaries. So don't get it twisted. I'm not telling you to put up with the bullshit. But what I'm, what I'm telling you is... Uh, Consult your uh, spirit team further. 
if you have a spiritual guide, if you have a mentor, if, if you're, if you are fortunate enough to know who that is in this physical realm, consult with them about this situation. Okay, group two. Nope, this is group three. Okay, group three. That's your reading. Excuse me. I hope this reading resonated with you guys at any point in time. If it did, Ashe, I'm grateful for that. Thank you guys so much, so much for watching, for subscribing, for tuning in to my videos. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign out, but I will see you guys in my next video. Okay. Bye, guys.